few of the heritage panels arrived. The Magnum bulkhead and the red oxide panels are the new old stock parts. They're 60 years old. I've just collected them from the blaster. They had 60 years of grime and uh, surface rust on them. I've got the boot floor here. It's a later floor, which I'm going to make the alterations to make it correct for 1965. And the new floor assembly's just arrived from M Machine. So I'm going to finish off the boot floor right now, and then I'm going to start putting it all together. See the bit that I've got marked in Sharpie? I need to alter that because this screen aperture is actually a Mark II panel and I need to change it so that it's the same shape as the cant rail above the door. You can see it a bit clearer on the trestle. See the width of the cant rail there above the door. It's narrower on a later model. But this being a Mark I, I need to make that the same width all the way along. Also, just there, you can see the pencil mark. In October 1964, they introduced swivel sun visors. They stopped in late 65, 66, and it's one of the key features of a 1965 car, so I've got to get that correct. I've created the flat spot just here, just by chasing it in and planishing a little. It looks a little bit messy. I'm going to clean it up now, polish it up, and then file the hole into it for the sun visor and it will look original. There we go, job's done on that side. There's a 5 sixteenths of an inch square hole there because there's a clip that holds that in place. And there's another one above the door aperture, which I'll do later on, so that you can swivel it round like a modern car. That's the finished flat spot with the correct hole. The shaded area, I've got to cut that bit off and make that the same shape as the cant rail above the door as well. I'll clean that up now, like I did the other side. And then there's one other small alteration I need to make on this panel. The other correction on this front screen aperture panel is the bottom of the A pillar. There's that recess there that should be flat, like this side. It's an easy fix, I'll show you. The next panel that needs correction is the top dash rail. This is a Leyland panel. It had the Leyland sticker on it when it arrived before blasting. That means it's a Mark III panel. And the demister ducts are in the wrong place. Comparing it to a Mark I, that's where they should be. So I'm gonna mark them out in the right place, cut them and shut them and make them right. This top dash rail, I've done one side, the vent was from that pencil line to that pencil line. I've moved it all along a bit. It's going to be really difficult to film the other side, but I'm, I'm going to try and film key points. These two lines here, if 
I extend that line, it comes to there, but it's too close to the flange. It needs to move out three eighths of an inch to make it the same as an actual Mark I. It's a little bit awkward. So first step is to cut that, lay it down flat and weld it up again. I've got this clamped to a plate so that it can't possibly distort. Need to cut an extra couple of inches for the vent here now. This will probably get a bit noisy. Right, you can see where the edge of the old vent was and where I'm moving it to, I'm moving it down that much. So I need to fold on that line now. Now that's folded, I need to weld up that half hole, trim it down, and then make the actual hole even. So now I've got the lip in the right place, the actual vent slot is too wide. This is the width it should be, so on the other side, I cut a section out on that pencil line to this pencil line, made that entire section there, welded it in, and that's what I'll do here too. The front of the wind's all spot welded in place, welded to the bulkhead, the floor. I've got the front end built up, lined up quite nicely, just to double check the position of the scuttle and screen aperture. Top dash rail is in there. So a few more spot welds on there and move on to the next stage. With the inner wings fitted and spot welded, I've built up the front end. That's ready to be tacked together. I've also spot welded the scuttle and top dash rail in place. Then I've test fitted the boot lid. Now I can take that off, take the rear panel off, prep it and spot weld that in place so that I can clamp the roof on and test fit that.
now that everything fits as I like, on the boot lid, there's a little bit just here, on the brand new boot lids, it's not the same as an original Mark 1. This is a section from an original Mark 1 boot lid. You see there's the recess at the top here. I'm going to weld that into there. The boot lid frame looks the way it should now. A couple more jobs. I need to fit boot board brackets. I've got this panel which I cut from a Cooper S that I restored years ago. Gives me the correct locations. And then I have this pattern for getting the hole for the filler neck of the right hand tank in the right place. I've got the driver's door on the trestle here. I found last week that the gaps were a bit bigger than I'd like. Um, and when I measured the two doors, the passenger door was a sixteenth of an inch. That's 1.6 mil longer than the driver's door. 1.6 mil when you come to door gaps is massive. So what I'm attempting to do is stretch this door out a little bit. I've started off by unpicking the flange down the front. I'm going to stretch the front out and then do the back. see now I've managed to stretch it by best part of a couple of millimetres. With some luck when I knock the flange over I'll be able to treat it as a new door skin and stretch it out just a little bit more. I'd rather have it too big and peck it back slightly than have it too small again. Those hammer marks will dress out quite nicely once I've clenched it over again as well.
Now that the body shell is finished, last job is to make this original Moog eight port cylinder head fit with the 45 DCOE Weber carbs. Obviously it's not gonna fit inside the bonnet. I've trimmed the bonnet. There's just enough clearance. And I've made these to fit underneath. Joined to the slam panel, which will be painted body color. Just so there's not a big gaping gap. And I've secured them to the slam panel with 2BA screws and nuts. That's how it looks without the carburetors and with them. That would be monstrous. Now I've clenched the door skin back over after stretching. Managed to file out the hammer marks nicely and we've got a lovely gap. Overall the door fits really nicely. Final jobs have been create the vent in the roof gutter, add the drip rail, add the spare wheel bracket, and add my number plates for the final photos and final video.